Hello, I've been a small business coach for three years now and it's a sad fact that over half of the coaching clients that I take on aren't paying themselves properly. In fact, I estimate about 70% of them could not afford to pay themselves if they use the same pay structure as the rest of their team. That is not a tenable solution in the long term, so here I am today with a three-step solution to help you give yourself a pay rise. joys of my career is I get to speak to business owners and entrepreneurs from around the world. I'm always really fired up by the conversations and interested in their motivations. And let me tell you, if you ask a business owner or an entrepreneur why they carry on, why they're in business, I promise you that the number one reason will not be financial. There's usually reasons around controlling their own destiny or altruistic reasons or reasons of fulfilling their absolute potential. Yes, financial reasons are important, but very rarely will it be number one. But let me tell you, I'm a business owner who nearly lost everything back in 2011. And in fact, the only way we could keep going, the only way that we could keep the doors open and keep paying my team was if I stopped paying myself. And that meant I didn't take any income out of my business for three entire months. And let me tell you, it's very hard to stay motivated. It's very hard to keep pushing if you're not compensating yourself properly. My name is Phil Jackson, and I've dedicated the rest of my career to helping you master the business skills you need to build a business that you enjoy. And I'm here today with a three-step process to help you give yourself a pay rise. Let's start earning exactly what we're worth. And the first step is to really get to grips with how it is that you're spending your time. So I want you to look back through your diary over the last week and make sure you add in every single task that was work related. Whether that be carrying out service as some kind of technician in your own business, whether that be managing your team, marketing, taking care of social media, all of the business tasks I want you to diarise and allocate the amount of time that you spent on them over the last week. This first step is very often a wake up call and I think you should have very clearly in your mind what it is that is the most important thing for you to be doing in your business right now. For most of us, that's finding and keeping great quality customers. So have a look at that list of tasks that you have in front of you. How many of those tasks were actually related to finding and keeping great customers? You should be spending some time every single day on your number one priority. So if it doesn't feature as part of your diary last week, you maybe need to have a really close look at the goals that you set for yourself and your business earlier in the year. Once we have that list, we can go on to stage two. And stage two is to start highlighting. I want you to go through that list and highlight everything which was an income generating activity. So if you're still carrying out service or selling products in your business, you can highlight the time that you spent on sales. If you're marketing, that's an income generating activity, we can highlight that too. If you're managing your team's performance so that they get better results, we can highlight that as well. It's an income generating activity. What we'll very quickly find is that there's a huge portion of your week which is not taken up with income generating activity. What we need to do now is add in an hourly value for our income generating activities. So look at the income that was generated as a result of your activity, divide that by the number of hours that you dedicated to those income generating activities and that should give us an amount per hour in pounds or dollars or whatever you're working on. My income generating figure is £200 per hour. Now we need to get really smart around how we're spending our time. So stage three is to have a look at all of those activities that you didn't highlight. Okay, so if you're doing your own bookkeeping and accounting, that's not an income generating activity. So it wouldn't have got highlighted. What else is it that you're doing in your business? How else are you spending your time? I was coaching a salon owner who used to wash their own shop windows every week, for example. 
this is ridiculous because the final part of this process is to start getting rid of those activities which don't directly contribute to the financial well-being of your business. So anything you're not doing that isn't generating an income directly from your business, I want you to start to push out to other people. Let's take a few examples. So if my hourly rate for generating income is £200 an hour and I can find someone to clean my windows for less than £5 an hour, it is insane for me to be spending that time cleaning windows. It's much better to find somebody else to do that job, let them do what they're really good at, let me concentrate on the things that are going to grow and build my business. Similarly, bookkeeping. So many people are taking care of their own books because they think it's the only way to keep financial control in their business. This is not true. If you have a good bookkeeper who is reporting back to you regularly, you can outsource that task usually for between 10 and 20 pounds an hour. I can earn much more. And guess what? It won't take half the time either. I'm not a bookkeeper. I'm not trained to do that activity. It takes me forever to keep my books up to date. So let somebody else do it in a couple of hours and report back to me how we're doing financially. Very similarly, I'm not editing this video. It takes me a whole day to edit a seven to ten minute video. Much better for me to outsource that to somebody who knows exactly what they're doing with video editing and they'll do a better job than me anyway. So there we have it. Three steps to your pay rise. Let's get rid of those activities that aren't generating income. Get rid of anything which isn't hitting the level that you need to achieve for making it a valuable contribution to your business. And let's see what impact that has on our overall turnover and productivity. I hope that's been useful to you. If it has, don't forget to give me a thumbs up on YouTube or a review on iTunes. And don't forget to subscribe because I do a broadcast like this every single week and I would hate you to miss out on the content that I'm sharing. For more and more personalised approach, please reach out to me, coaching at philjackson.me. I love hearing about how business owners are doing. If you've already subscribed, I will see you again next week. Take care.